You ever record a whole video and then realize you were muted the entire time? What a rough day. What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Sound of Tech once again, and today we're going to be talking about mining on the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte. Yep, that infamous card that NVIDIA blocked mining on. Well, they didn't block mining on every algorithm, and it's still pretty profitable, so we're going to go over it right after a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is BlockFi. BlockFi provides financial products for crypto investors. Products include high-yield interest accounts, USD loans, and no-fee trading. With BlockFi, there are no hidden fees, just a return of up to 8.6% APY that starts accruing immediately, plus compounding interest every month. Committed to trust and transparency, BlockFi services comply with comprehensive state and federal regulations, and they use Winklevoss's Gemini as their primary custodian, wrapping layers of industry-leading protection around clients' assets. To facilitate this transparency, BlockFi allows me to mention that they are centralized and there is a potential for loss. So as with any investment, do your own research. Personally, I have funded over 4,000 USD equivalent in Bitcoin to my BlockFi account and accrued additional interest on top of my mining rewards. For a limited time, you can earn crypto bonus of up to $250 when you open a new account by visiting the link in the description, blockfi.com slash son of a tech. Welcome back. So... Everybody knows the 3060 has been nerfed for Ethereum mining. It is performed via a BIOS handshake with the driver, and therefore it's pretty much impossible to get around at this time until somebody figures it out, and then we'll go over that and cover it on this channel if that ever does happen. But, but does it really need to happen? With Ethereum moving to proof of stake soon, as well as with Ethereum getting EIP-1559 in July, most miners are gonna be moving off of Ethereum anyways, making NVIDIA's implementation of blocking Ethereum hash rate and having it on the 3060 just the biggest joke on the internet in my humble opinion now can you get a 3060 and be as profitable on the 3060 as it would presumably be on ethereum actually yes pretty dang close and we're going to be covering the mining algorithms for seven different coins and then we're going to cover at the end it's projected profit per day based on the current price of individual coins on those algorithms and the difficulty of their networks. But before we do that, let's talk about the GPU itself. Its interface is PCI Express Gen 4, so if you are planning on gaming on it, there are potential performance gains with having a supported motherboard. That being said, they haven't quite implemented all of the smart access memory features that Radeon has, so it's not quite as drastic as, say, smart access memory with an RX 6800. It has 3,584 CUDA cores with a boost clock of 1,777 megahertz. The memory speed is 15 gigabits per second over a 192-bit bus that connects 12 gigabytes of GDDR6. The display outputs are three DisplayPort 1.4a ports and a single HDMI 2.1 port. It does support HDCP. Its power consumption is 170 watts, powered by a single 8-pin PCIe and a single 6-pin PCIe. Its recommended power supply is 550 watts, that's for everyday use, not necessarily in regard to mining, and that pretty much wraps up the specifications. So, we get to get into the fun part now, which is, of course, mining. We're going to start off with everybody's favorite, at least if you're moving from AMD. This will be in order of least profitable to most profitable, but we're going to go over the stats and have a chart at the end for you to review. So we have Ravencoin coming in pretty much as least profitable right now for this particular GPU, and everything is not overclocked. This is because what we're trying to do is get a baseline of essentially its performance across all algorithms, and then I will revisit individual coins and their overclocks in another video to get you the most out of the graphics card. So it is 20.6 mega hash a second at 170 watts for Kapow, which is Ravencoin. And that's pretty much what you're going to be looking at for its performance. Moving on, we have Ethereum, which is more profitable than Ravencoin even being nerfed, and that is only by one penny. However, here's what's interesting. When you start the miner, it hasn't quite detected that it's mining Ethereum yet. So you can see that at full potential, 
out of the box, it would be around 40 mega hash a second. But as the miner runs and it's detected by the BIOS handshake and the driver, it nerfs it down to 21 mega hash a second at 110 watts. That still gets you in profit for Ethereum, which is funny. But of course, there are better options now than mining Ethereum with this particular GPU. So the next coin, which is just a little bit more profitable, is going to be Xano with Prog Pal Z. Now this is a newer one that is starting to be an up and coming coin and I do wanna get a full review out on it. So look for that on this channel. I'm pretty curious. It's at 17.8 mega hash a second when it started and then it bumped up to around 20.5 mega hash a second at 170 watts pretty reliably. And that is once again, Prog Pal Z. Then we have Mimble Wimble Coin. Now this is an oldie, but a goodie. Everybody's kind of familiar with Mimble Wimble Coin. It has had a recent pump. Proof of work coins are pumping right now. Those altcoins are doing pretty good. Here's the weird thing that I found. LOL Miner only does about 0.77 graphs a second. No matter what I changed in the config, I couldn't really figure out how to get what I was seeing from Serpent's video. Now Serpent has covered this and I'll link his video down below as well. And he's covered it more in depth with some overclocks on some of these algos, but he has also not covered all the algos that we're gonna be covering here today. So at this point, I went ahead and checked out G Miner, which is what he used. And yes, we got 1.25 graphs a second at the same wattage around 130 watts, which is pretty good. So keep that in mind. That is a coin that you want to look at thanks to the lower power consumptions. Then we have Kaku 29 with Eternity. And Eternity is another proof of work coin that is kind of on the up and up. It's at 7.12 graphs a second. And that is at about 160 watts and let me know if you guys like want to put some of these in a particular order for coin reviews or how to mines and then let me know if you need the how to mine uh initially or whatever and then we'll we'll go from there so we're down to the final two and conflux comes in second place of course and that is one a lot of people are interested in. So it's Octopus algorithm. It's gonna perform better on NVIDIA GPUs. And currently it is at around 40 mega hash a second out of the box with 170 watts. Now I have confirmed with both Serpent as well as Keith from WCCF Tech that this card will do 45 to 47 mega hash a second with a plus 1400 memory overclock and about 80% of the power knocking it down to 130 watts. So this is looking really good. We'll confirm those overclocks for you guys. And then we will need to compare the top two coins here post overclock to see what is the best bet for you. Another thing to mention about Octopus and Conflux in particular, because that's the coin you need to be able to swap, is it is a little bit more difficult to swap right now, especially because Binance.com is having some issues with the chain and you can't do deposits to Binance.com. So you're kind of running into a, a little bit of an issue. That's also where the coin is most profitable. So they're pulling the price for the for Conflux from Binance, but at the same time, you can't really put it in there to sell it. So it's a little misleading. It's not as profitable as uh, you might think. Now, one that is really taking over here that is available on Binance.com that you can deposit is going to be Cortex. Now, this one's kind of coming out of nowhere and I haven't even had time to research everything. Obviously with Conflux, I've researched it. I think it's a cool project. We have multi-chain proof of work, which is really neat. If you guys want a full coin review on Cortex, let me know in the comment section below. But the RTX 3060 will do 2.54 graphs a second at 160 watts. Now, because it is the most profitable, I did play around with overclocking. And here's the deal. It's not that memory intensive. It's actually more core clock intensive. So giving yourself a 100 to a 200 megahertz boost on the core clock and cranking that power consumption bar down is going to be what you are looking at. That does mean though, potentially, if you're wanting to min max, you kind of 
don't get that core overclock quite up as high because the power consumption dropping that down affects the core clock. So it's kind of this weird point where you could do 2.6 graphs a second, but you're going to sacrifice a huge power consumption. So I like sitting right around 2.54 graphs a second with this particular one and cranking that power consumption down to 70% and then right around there we're sitting around 120 watts so that's kind of my little preview to the overclocking for Cortex. So finally let's go ahead and talk about profitability. Now Kapow is going to be around $2.24 a day at the current difficulty and the price in USD of Ravencoin. Ethereum would be about $2.25 a day, and Xano would be about $2.70 a day. Mimblewimblecoin would be about $2.98 a day, and Kaku29, which is Eternity, would be about $3.39 a day. Conflux, with the Octopus algorithm, would be at $3.48 a day, and finally, in the lead by a ton is Cortex with a cool $4.32 a day, which even if you had Ethereum at full performance on this card, it would only beat the Cortex by about 20 cents a day. So what did Nvidia achieve here? Absolutely nothing in my opinion at least as the current market sit, which is just awesome. Thanks for watching. I hope the video was informative. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below and hit that notification bell because I know not a lot of you have. I'll see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here. Or of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.